Hello, and welcome to the Learning Center. My name is Lillian Travellini, and I'm so excited about the guest I have today. It's so interesting and fascinating, and I knew nothing about it before today. His name is Saeed, and tell me, Saeed, what do you practice in religion that I know nothing about? First of all, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, I feel, truly feel honored to be here uh, and to share a little bit of our faith. Uh, so I am a Muslim, uh, a practicing Muslim. Uh, a Muslim is someone who practices uh, the religion of Islam. Uh, Islam is a religion that basically means uh, submission, uh, submission of our will to the will of God. Uh, How do you know the will of God? Uh, yes, so the will of God is uh, preserved carefully, differentiating what is good from evil. And in all the books that were revealed by God to humankind, that includes the gospel given to Prophet uh, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, or the Torah, or the Old Testament given to Moses, and the Quran, the scripture that we follow, given to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So the, the Islam uh, is the religion practiced by nearly 1.6 billion Muslims all over the world. And uh, anyone who testifies that there is no God, now no one is worthy of worship except God. And Prophet Muhammad uh, is his messenger. He becomes a Muslim. And there are certain guidelines we follow, uh, the code of conduct for our life. Uh, and as prescribed in these divinely revealed books, and as it was demonstrated to us by our Prophet, if we follow those commandments and the guidelines, one becomes a Muslim. Now, do you follow, you say Jesus, you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes. And what about... Uh, his mother, there was, you know. Yes, yes, yes. We follow, uh, we believe, the Muslims believe in the virgin birth uh, and the miraculous conception and birth of uh, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and, uh, uh, and uh, his mother Mary. In fact, uh, the scripture we follow, uh, the Quran, has a whole chapter dedicated to Mother Mary. Really? Peace be upon him. Sounds like a Catholic. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, uh, but to take a step back, when I say we follow Islam, uh, Islam has five basic tenets. Yes. Uh, I already spoke to you about one tenet, which is the basic belief in one God, one unique God with no partners. Uh, we call him Allah. Uh, we prefer to use the word Allah rather than God, although they both mean the same thing. The word Allah is an Arabic word that cannot be tampered with. It truly signifies the uniqueness of this supreme being that we call God. Mm. So once we testify that we believe in God and his messengers, that is the first tenet. The second tenet, when we say we believe in God, we also have to show it in our actions. The first of those actions we pray. So Muslims follow this second tenet called Salah also called prayer, and we pray at five appointed hours in really? the day. Really? Have you heard about that? Yes, and these are um, mandatory prayers. Um, uh, one happens at before sunrise in the morning, second one happens slightly after noon, the third one happens between noon and the evening, the fourth one happens at the time of sunset, we call it Maghrib, and fifth one happens just before we go to sleep. And you won't do this every single day? Every practicing Muslim, adult Muslim, whether or not he is healthy or she is healthy, supposed to perform these five prayers. And what so kind this of is prayers called, are they? Are they these are, the, the prayer also is, is called Salah in Arabic. It has got a very clearly defined structure. First of all, before we get into the, uh, the prayer, we wash ourselves. Uh, we purify ourselves physically and then we stand in prayer and there are certain physical movements associated with them and we recite uh, certain uh, verses from the holy book, Quran, and uh, that finishes the prayer. So this is the second tenet. The third tenet is 
charity. Uh, you know, the action of praying to God alone is not going to show how good we are. Uh, how good we are is uh, shown by how we help each other out. Huh? So the third uh, tenet. So the, the, would you also help someone that wasn't a Muslim? Oh, yes, absolutely. Doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, you, it doesn't it, matter who it is. It is all about helping humanity, a fellow human being. Yeah. So uh, we are, by the tenet of our religion, uh, required to feed the poor, feed the needy, and give away our wealth. What's that? In charity. Oh, yeah. The charity goes along with the prayer. The, the prayer is called Salah, and the charity is called Zakah, and they go together. Yeah. Whenever they are mentioned, they are mentioned together in our scripture. Helping so people. that is the third tenet. The fourth tenet is uh, fasting in the month of Ramadan. Uh, there is this holy month called Ramadan. Islam yeah. Muslims follow lunar calendar. It has 12 months, like uh, Gregorian calendar. Yeah. Uh, but it is shorter by 10 days or 11 days. Um, than when compared to the Gregorian calendar. There is one month called Ramadan which we consider holy and in this month we believe uh, that the holy Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. So in this one month we have been instructed to fast from dawn until sunset. Then you during, can eat after sunset? Yes, we can eat after sunset, eat okay. and drink. Oh, so okay. during these hours from dawn until sunset, we refrain from eating or drinking or uh, having physical relationships. I thought you meant that every day don't eat any drinking at all. You know. uh, uh, for one month yeah. during the daytime hours. Yeah. Uh, this is the fourth tenet and we call it Saum or also known as Sath. Yeah. The fifth tenet is uh, visiting Mecca, the, the, the holy city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia for a pilgrimage. If you are financially and physically capable of doing so, uh, we are required to go and visit that place uh, on a pilgrimage and try to retrace the steps of Prophet Abraham. Uh, so it's all Abraham. about Abraham. Oh, Abraham. Uh, yeah, uh, Abraham and his wife. Yeah, 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 they're the Christian body. So uh, this is the fifth planet. Uh, the Abraham. Uh, I mentioned Abraham. So, Islam is one of the three religions that consider Abraham to be the, uh, the patronal figure. So, mm. Judaism, Christianity and Islam, all three religions consider Abraham to be the father figure. Wow. That's why these are also called Abrahamic religions. And because all three religions believe in one God, we are also called monotheistic religions. Yeah. There are no two gods. One God. Now, do you believe that if you pray for something, you will get it? Or, you know, say, or if you have an illness, do you believe in praying that maybe God will heal you? Or, Absolutely. Yeah. We do believe um, at the end of our ritualistic prayer, we call what is called supplication. We call it dua. Basically asking God for whatever you want. Yeah. Now, it is our firm belief that whatever we ask for will be granted by God. But there are times when what we ask for is not granted. And we consider it to be the infinite wisdom of God that He did not give us that. Maybe it is not in our best interest. Yeah. Say, uh, for example, if I ask for, a, for something that I have been longing for, say for example, to take a crude example, let's say I'm, I was long, longing for a new car. Yeah. <laughs> and I have been asking God for that. Yeah. And it did not come to me, let's say. Yeah. So then, as a true believer, as a Muslim, it is my belief that if, that if God did not grant me the new car, it may be in, in my best interest. So that's, what, that's how the belief goes. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, we truly believe that, especially in terms of illness, and health, um, and the wealth and poverty, they all come and go based on the will of God. That's so how it should be. How can he judge all the people? That's an excellent question. Uh, how can anyone judge anybody? What is good? What is bad? What is true? What is false? 
uh, how do we differentiate right what is the standard uh, because what is good for what i consider good uh, may not be considered good by others right so these are human standards but there is one ultimate standard set by god and that standard is codified in the divinely revealed books such as the old testament the torah uh, the new testament the gospel and yeah. the the you Psalms. read the gospel in the yeah. new testament yeah what well, we read the quran which essentially contains the same message yeah. and the, of course the quran so the we call quran the ultimate authority to decide what is good and what is bad what mm. is true and what is false once we stick to and adhere to the rules set down in this divine book we can be assured of the fact that we led a good life basically uh, believing in one true god following the example set by his prophets and helping out the neighbors helping out the poor and needy and being good to others and to refrain ourselves from committing evil actions is is enough to claim that we have lived a good life so that's how the judgment happens can a human judge another human no can god judge a human yes because he has clearly laid down guidelines now let's get back to the marriages and the women the uh, muslims mm-hmm. what the rule is that women are not appreciated they have an inferior role and if they do anything uh, say adultery quickly they're stoned to death right um in certain cultures and in certain countries yes but let me get back to your the first part of the question where you said women are treated as kind of second class citizens or some lower kind yeah. of being yeah. that's not true uh because if you consider the global muslim population this 1.6 to 1.5 billion half of them are obviously women yeah. and if they were to be treated uh, badly or oppressed you would have had a lot of problems in this world <laughs> and this is not to say that women are not all are treated very well all over the world there are cultures where um, men tend to show their superiority uh, over women but that happens across all religions it is not unique to to islam in fact in islam women are treated so specially uh, that they are considered the very foundation of our society yeah. because the first two and half to three years of a child's life is spent with the mother so whatever love and kindness shown by the mother towards the child is what makes the child blossom into a healthy responsible person yeah so that's what they taught it they are charged family. with that right that's why the mother the relationship between mother and child is very special and muslims place a lot of importance on that mm-hmm. now as, as there are some uh, societies that are highly super masculine and they tend to uh, oppress women but that has no place in religion at all mm-hmm. in fact after islam came into picture 1400 years ago women have been given the rights of inheritance and they have been given their property rights and the cho- the ability to choose their spouses all these things But happened before the uh, yeah. can they vote oh yes yeah. so vote? if you consider even american society Uh, the women in america were given the voting rights uh, sometime uh, at the end of 19th century yeah. if i am not mistaken Around but 1920 yeah. yeah but and the inheritance of property as well yeah. but this has been happening uh, since the 1400 years ago before the advent of islam women uh, were treated badly and uh, girl children were actually buried alive in the prehistoric uh, in arabia in the pagan uh, in the pagan Why be- because they because the pagan societies were and and the tribal societies were uh, so so ignorant about girl children that they used to consider them as a burden that's not the case when islam came along that entire practice was stopped okay. and especially prophet muhammad peace be upon him he uh, made sure that not a single girl child is buried alive after he I came never knew that. Yeah. yeah yeah so 
this whole um, uh, discussion about uh, women being oppressed, uh, it has no basis in religion at all. Muslim women across the board you will see uh, making lot of progress in all fields. Uh, they are educated, uh, they are going to school, they are uh, learning. There are certain societies where um, uh, they do not like women to step out, but that has got more to do with male chauvinism than with religion. There, they, uh, oppressing women has no room uh, in religion, in Islam. Mm. Which, uh, uh, when I did not address the, the adultery part, yeah. uh, I am sorry. Adultery itself is considered um, something, a, a great evil that can eat away at the very foundation of a society. What happens in adultery is that men being men uh, can be irresponsible and they can walk away and the women are left holding the babies. Now the single parenting, I know how difficult the single parenting is. And single parenting and a, and a child growing up in a society without father can um, cannot lead to a, a very healthy uh, adult coming out That's of the process, That's right? True. So, and, and uh, Islam recognizes that fact, and that's why it places a strong uh, emphasis on removing adultery from the society. That's why in Islam, uh, premarital relationships and extramarital relationship, especially extramarital relationships, are totally forbidden. Uh, we call it zina and uh, it's considered uh, one of the great sins and uh, and when something like that happens and if there is a real proof of that having happened and if there is a islamic government that follows the dictates of islam there has to be a due process a uh, total uh, 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 um, arguments, counter arguments and presentation of witnesses yeah. and so on and so forth before a verdict is given about um, Taking care yeah. of the it is not like anyone can start stoning people or killing people in the name of uh, religion uh, because someone uh, uh, committed adultery. Uh, that is vigilante justice yeah. and vigilante justice has no place in Islam. But there are some countries that do practice that. Um, yes, and even that, are they, first, the first question we need to ask is, are they legitimate Islamic governments or not? Yeah. If not, uh, that's not a practice that uh, that, that is uh, approved. Uh, so, yes. So that that addresses the the adultery part. So a lot of people do lot of things uh, in the name of Islam, whether or not it is actually uh, codified in the religion or not is a different thing. A lot of killings happen, uh, and people go crazy and start shooting people, and then uh, exactly start shouting Allahu Akbar. So, if someone shouted Allahu Akbar while killing others, does not make it legitimate at all. Now, to the established um, Muslim churches, uh, what do you call them? Not church. We call it masjid. masjid. Or in English, it is called a mosque. A mosque. Now, where the countries that are killing, you know, like innocent people, do those mosques try to stop that? Stop those Muslims from beheading people? And oh yes, uh, actually. Um, anybody who has a basic understanding of Islam uh, cannot tolerate or condone that kind of behavior. And uh, clergy, the Imams or the Muslim clergymen, uh, they across the Muslim world, they keep preaching about this. Yeah. So actually, um, there is a clear, um, uh, clear uh, guidelines uh, in Quran about committing violence, right? In chapter uh, 5, uh, verse 32, it says, if anyone kills one person, it is as if he has slain the whole mankind. Mm -hmm. And if anyone has saved one person, it is as if he has saved the whole human man, humankind. Similarly, in another chapter, the, really, the very next chapter called Surah Al-Anam, uh, God says, take not a life, take not a single life because God has created that life as sacred. Wonderful. God has made it sacred. And I am just quoting two examples from the from That the is beautiful. Now these are taught over and over again across the Muslim world by preachers and, and our Imams. Now, 
but a person who has already decided to commit evil will go ahead and commit evil yes. right? and he gives it a stamp of islam on top of it if you look closely much of the violence that happens in the name of islam has absolutely no basis in religion it has got something else underneath if you scratch the surface you will find politics you will find lust for power lust for uh, greed for wealth um, yeah. uh, and lust for other things underneath it has got absolutely no basis uh, in islam but a whole generation is a whole um, religion gets uh, tarnished by the acts of a few people That's it's right. unfortunate reality we are yeah. living with Yeah, especially like when those innocent young people were beheaded. Right. That was Yeah, it can be heartbreaking. And all these beheadings and and other acts of violence you see across Europe also and people yeah. ramming others uh, with uh, vans a new kind of terror uh, that has started sprouting up. It yeah. is heartbreaking to see this and we um we condemn that. Yeah. Uh, we ac- Muslims across the world condemn that unconditionally. Uh it is heartbreaking and it is saddening at two levels for muslims not only do we see and feel sad about the loss of life and the injuries yeah. we feel doubly sad because our the faith that we profess is coming under attack is coming under question so that is uh, what is doubly heartbreaking for us uh, and we are trying to to do as much as we can to condemn those kind of attacks and to prevent those kind of attacks right. because these crazy people can sprout up anywhere oh, yeah. and uh, and these crazy people if you look at them uh, they are generally disgruntled uh, uh, members of the society who have some other kind of grievances that show up uh, and that are, that is given a outward appearance of religion but truly there is no basis for violence in our religion Right. Now, when you pray to God, is that the only one you pray to, or do you pray to Muhammad too, or just God? No, it? no, no. We pray to one God, yeah. as I said, who we call Allah. Yeah. Uh, praying to anyone else is called uh, is associating partners unto God, right. and which is the greatest sin one can commit. So, mm-hmm. no, we do not pray to anyone else. especially uh, we do not associate divinity with prophet muhammad he was a human being we he was a uh, great human being he brought us the message from god and he is the model for us we consider him the greatest human being to have be, have ever lived and we try to emulate him and we try to be good to the rest of the people um, but we do not associate divinity with him i see now uh... What, who, what angel brought the Quran to Mohammed? An angel brought it, right? Was that true? Yes. Archangel Gabriel, uh, we call yeah. him Jibrail. Yeah. He brought the first verses of the Quran to Prophet Muhammad uh, when he was 40 years of age. Yeah. Uh, this was the, the, the revelation started uh, in the year 610 AD. Yeah. And this revelation uh, continued. uh over the period of 23 years wow. and they uh, they ended just before he died yeah. so and uh, the, the they are very beautiful verses the first five verses that were revealed they are in a surah called uh, ikra and yeah. that instruct human kind to read oh wow. and read in the name of your lord who has created you from a clot of congealed blood is beautiful uh, these these are the 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 first five verses i obviously i did not finish all the five verses yeah. but uh, if you want more information you can uh, contact me and i will provide all the information yeah. now what is cuz what does god say it's like after one day so like when you die do do yeah. they say what is going to happen yeah one of the basic uh, uh, parts of our belief system is that there is life after death so mm-hmm. it is the muslim belief it's a uh, islamic belief that after death uh, although our physical bodies uh, decompose and we turn into dust uh, there will be a day of judgment uh, when we call the day of qiyama uh, when all of us will be ga- gathered 
and will be presented will be standing in front of god where an account will be taken of our deeds that we have done when we were alive uh, and the good deeds versus bad deeds are weighed against each other and depending on that there will be outcome and uh, then what happens uh, then there will be there is a concept of hell and heaven uh, the eternal life uh, is spent in either in hell or heaven and there are very picturesque descriptions of hell and heaven in the really? quran if you read through them you will understand can you describe what hell heaven is i don't want to hear about that heaven is generally uh, described as a great expanse with greenery all around with rivers flowing underneath and with uh, uh, with uh, people who have committed good acts in their lives those, those who have done good in their lives uh, inhibit that place and they get to have whatever their heart desires uh, and the 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 pleasures are permanent so and they get to see god with their own eyes so is there just a quite a wonderful uh which i say thought to think that you can do that and we must really make these three for one to be good right, right. absolutely so there is inherently good in all of us yeah and uh, it is um, are you with your family that you had on earth yes absolutely oh, yeah. yes uh, uh, yes so as i said uh, uh, a person in uh, dwelling in heaven tends to have whatever his or her heart desires that includes uh, companionship of whoever she or he wants that includes their immediate family how does one become an, a muslim so, i like uh, anybody I like who believes Uh, and uh, who testifies both um, in by heart and by lips that there is none worthy of worship but god allah uh, and uh, prophet muhammad is his messenger and servant whoever says these words in whatever language he or she likes becomes a muslim and after that follows the dictates the 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 practices of uh, islam and he or she is a muslim well wow. uh, if you want more information uh, you can go to our on our website Uh, yeah. it is www.islamicsocietyframingham.org yeah. you can look it up on google as well yeah. uh, we are on uh, union avenue 324 union avenue in framingham so you can go look up our website you can there is contact information there uh, and you can get to know more or there is a, a bigger resource uh, yislam.org um, you can go on their website also uh, it has got a lot of uh, useful information Uh, for you to to read through has anyone ever seen someone who's died it may be walked into a room who is who is died it, it, it's say someone has died because i know uh, my son michael you know has seen people who have died and you know and uh, he saw his father you know walking around his chief uh, the day he died okay so those kind of visions uh, yeah, yeah. I have not met anyone myself uh, but uh, I have heard of uh, uh, some saints who have had these visions who right. uh, and they can they are almost like dreams uh, yeah. and yeah. Uh, I am not qualified to <laughs> to I to was really just curious you know it's yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah i have not re- in yeah. person i have met anyone but i have heard of those kind of yeah. stories right it sounds like a wonderful religion really and yeah, uh, yeah. I enjoyed every minute of it. Thank you so, so much for having me. So glad you came. Here. Yeah, thank and you so much. I hope that uh, you come again. Yeah. Yeah. I and and enlighten us with more good things. I will. And thank tell you me so how much. to be good to people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank so, you so much, Lillian. All right. I appreciate your having me here. Truly an honor. Yeah. And I'm sure everybody enjoyed everything that you said. and if they want to call you directly yes uh, i will provide the 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 uh, information contact number yeah. uh, with our tv crew here good thank you well thank you all and uh, i've enjoyed it tremendously thank you thank you very much i hope you all enjoyed it and uh, visit us the learning center the shows are great i meet the nicest people i could ever meet <laughs>